one thing for people to say, oh, Trump's just blustering when he talks about retribution. It's quite another to have concrete plans and mentions to have Liz Cheney uh, in a televised military you know, tribunal. Uh, and, and by the way, who did you know, televised trials and confessions of political enemies? Uh, people I study like uh, Gaddafi, the murderous you know, Libyan dictator. And the other thing that is important is uh, the, the scale of what's going on, which is, as David was saying, there are certain, you know, you can relate this to certain things in American history. But, for example, the mass deportation, 15 to 20 million people. And by the way, uh, Trump told Time magazine when he did that interview, he mentioned this. And this is a pillar of Project 2025, so much for him not knowing about it. But... I want to be clear with people that this is almost 5% of the American population. Uh, 15 million people, to take the lower number, is more than the entire population of Sweden, Belgium, Haiti, Cuba. Uh, it's 15 times as much as Operation Wetback. And in all of World War II, uh, it, there were 65 million displacements and deportations within Europe. This is 20 million. So the, this is what I'm saying is that this is uh, thinking on a dictator scale. And Steve Bannon is well versed in Lenin and Stalin and Hitler and Mussolini, as are many of these people. And so we have to take this very seriously as uh, an autocratic um, program that has elements that go back to old school dictators. Ruth, what do we do? We have a few days to prepare for the Republican convention, and it strikes me as wholly inadequate to cover this convention the way we've covered past conventions, where we have former Republicans like David Jolly and myself on with, with Demo former Democrats like Claire or, or other um, former Democratic leaders, and, and we talk about shifts in the platform. I mean, Trump isn't running as a Republican candidate. He's running as a brutal wannabe dictator. And the plans are on paper. We have them. And it feels like we still haven't made the shift toward covering right. the choice between continuing to be a democracy that we raise our kids in and turning into not just an autocracy, but a brutal one based on the point you just made. How do we make that shift this week to be prepared for next week? Yeah, we're in this like twilight zone. It was the same with the debate that Nicole, you and I talked about, that this wasn't really a debate because one person came to spew authoritarian propaganda. Um, these con this convention and that platform they released, it reads like something in its tone, not its content, but its tone. It reads like something out of North Korea uh, or, you know, Stalinist Russia, where the happy harvest with everything has an exclamation point. It's all in caps, you know. Um, so this is the GOP is now an autocratic entity. And so in a way, you know, it's we're continuing with these election season rituals, the debates, the conventions. But the, the content and the purpose has changed. And so this convention is going to be one big loyalty performance for Trump to consolidate his cult of personality. And indeed, you know, we see like when Marco Rubio says, oh, Trump doesn't know anything. This uh, there's a reference to authoritarian history. Uh, almost every regime, one of the refrains was, if Hitler only knew, if Mussolini only knew what was going on, but he doesn't know because he's a good man. And so there's this like, and these, these guys play with this to, to preserve their cults of personality. So if we see this convention uh, in an authoritarian lens as kind of all hail the great leader, and as a, um, an opportunity to, for him to tighten the vice further on this party, we'll be closer to understanding uh, what we see. Yeah, well, authoritarians specialize in bringing the unthinkable into being, and in that process, making us betray not only each other, but ourselves. Um, if, you know, and this is a point that Democrats can use because this whole thing is a colossal act of self-harm that the project 2025. I mean, think of all the things that will be abolished or neutralized and changed out of all recognition. The Department of Commerce. Now, how is that going to be good for business? Because the Department of Commerce also operates in embassies around the world. Um, the Department of Education is supposed to be, you know, eventually abolished. How is that going to be good for our prosperity as a nation? Uh, and our people as a nation. And you can go on and on. So you, you want to have these conversations like we're having 
to make these outcome arguments and make people see that they are voting to basically kneecap America because that's Trump's plan. He's not going to be isolationist if he gets in. He is aligned very clearly with dictators. And his new thing is saying that he's going to bring peace to the world. This is what Orban's saying. This is what Putin's saying. She, this is their talking point. And the price of that peace is that America would exit NATO and America would become a failed state. And that's always been Putin's plan for us. So Project 2025, it destroys things to leave us in a state of chaos and repression. Now it's going to build other things. And those are autocratic things. Um, you know, starting with giving huge, you know, uh, power to the executive. It's all there in, in black and white, as, as Angela said. Um, but we've got to be very clear to communicate to people that they are voting to uh, shoot themselves in the foot, basically, if they vote for Trump. It, it's the it's the fundamental thing. And um, this is what got me uh, into following Trump in 2016. I saw that he was using his rallies uh, for a reason that goes back to fascism, that you need to change people's perception of violence. You need to, to get them to see violence as sometimes justified, sometimes necessary. And so Trump used his rallies from 2015 onwards, and this was the basis of my report for the January 6th committee, as radicalization vehicles. And he would say, in the old days, you could beat up people. Um, and then he's engaging much later in dehumanizing rhetoric. And he's created a climate, uh, of course, saying also, you know, he could stand on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone. Launching his campaign at Waco, Texas, where, you know, a pilgrimage site for extremists. Going to a gun store and looking at a, a Glock with his name on it. Uh, you know, it's not subtle. And, and of course, praising uh, murderous dictators all over the world. So... So changing the perception of violence in Americans' minds, that violence becomes the way you solve differences. That's what some of these quotes were saying. You don't reason, you don't discuss, you kill, um, you beat up, you jail, and then you torture. And this is the terrain of authoritarianism, and this is what uh, I'm, I'm most worried about. He has created a permission structure for you know, all kinds of people to air their most bloodthirsty uh, fantasies. And this is the way you do politics now for some of these people.